you've long been a pioneer of androgyny and it seems that <laughs> You know, now being gender fluid is incredibly fashionable and everybody's talking yeah, about it. Yeah, I mean, you I've this, right? For, <laughs> you were there before anybody else. I was, uh, I've been doing the gender fluid thing for a minute. I mean, it just feels natural. I think, like, I think everyone's just wanting to feel um, in their own body and, you know, they want to feel themselves because I think you realize what else is there. And I think there's so many examples now that, you know, uh, social media is so hot in everyone's lives from people from six to 66 you know and it's like this very um it's very uh easy to watch people being themselves all day long and i think people want a piece of that for themselves so and then they think what it what is entailed in being myself and that's why i think we have such a spectrum going on right now because everybody has a different idea of what's themselves people talk about this genre emerging genre of queer pop of you know lgbt artists reclaiming their sexuality through pop music it, is that true, or do you think you just talk about your life and your experience? No, I think people are doing it more and more. I think people are, um, you know, uh, emboldened by, um, again, social media and, and seeing people live their lives truthfully. And, and yeah, definitely reclaiming that as um, the right of um, women to do that for women, men to do that for men. Um, I don't know that uh, it's any better in some ways, it's, I'm not, you know, glorifying, you know, uh, sexualizing people, but I, you know, I think that, again, done responsibly, and if people are, um, you know, um, doing it with love, <laughs> with a good intention, or, you know, I think everybody can tell when something's being done indecently, <laughs> in a way. I mean, you don't subscribe to a certain set image of a woman, you've always done your own thing. Do you think, you know, there's a there's a pressure on women in pop and in music to kind of perform gender in a certain way. I remember I didn't know if I could even, you know, embark on this career because I knew that I wasn't going to conform to what I had seen growing up, you know, and, and I think that, you know, it was a difficult, um, it was a difficult foray into the, the business and into my own um, um, doing of the business, you know, like where I like went after it because I was like, oh God, this is going to be a bitch, you know. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> How did you do it? Did you just find the courage, or I just kept doing it? It was just like you know, like <coughs> you know, <coughs> like knocking, knocking down, you know, and just trying to get better at myself. Because you know, you have role model. Like there's been so many role models, like some of the ones like Melissa Etheridge or um, Tracy Chapman or someone like that, you know, back in the day. And you think to yourself, like, how did they do it? You know, they did it. They had great songs. <laughs> You know, I mean, that was not easy to get through as those two women in that time, and they did it because they had great, great songs. And that's what I think is, you know, that's what it takes. But do you think you got knockbacks because you didn't subscribe to that particular, when you first started uh, yeah. out? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you're starting, it's like a handicap a little bit, you know, sometimes. You know, not so much now, you know. But I think, you know, even now, I feel like, you know, there's a quota. It's like, oh, that one. Yeah, we need one of those, you know, and uh, and I don't think it's like I think that's what I I wish for the movement to get to the point where it's not a quota scenario, where it's like what if a label had ten, you know, LGBTQ artists that just happen to be doing great, and and they had like, you know, three heterosexual artists, and they were just like whatever, but you know, and it was just because of that was what was great at the time. Do you think the Me Too movement has, has kind of helped music in any way? I think it's helping entertainment in general, yeah. I think that, you know, it's, um, I think it's a little awkward right now, you know, it's making things a little awkward because there's, you know, there's people that don't want to um, usher this time in. They're fighting it for sure, I'm sure. But um, I think that, you know, every every movement goes through awkward times and I think, you know, um, but there's no, that's no reason to shy away from it. it has to be done it's just something it's part of our um evolution now you famously talked about your ex-girlfriends and your music is that just because life happens or is it important for you to talk about your sexuality and your music well i'm a, a sap no matter what i uh what part of the spectrum i was on you know i i feel like i just uh, that's what moves me uh emotionally a lot of times you know that um romantic love I mean, I, I can't apologize for relationship songs. It's like, you know, I, I, whatever comes out, you know. I mean, that's why I think relationships are so complicated because you relived um, your past through your lover a lot of times. So it's not um, only just about that. It's about my worldview and what I've been through. And is it, 
important for you to be a kind of pin up or a role model for the queer community in, in any way? Because obviously you are, whether you kind of like it or not, I they mean, listen of course. to your music. And I mean, if I can encourage anybody to live, um, to go for it or live their life truthfully or like, or it's something that sparks an interest in somebody to, um, you know, have a life that allows them to be themselves, I'm over the moon about that. That'd be great. I would, I'd like to know if there's more people going for it careers in um, you know music at now as opposed to before because that just like I feel like people can really see all kinds of people doing it and they can see all the stages you know it's like it's really like as a kid you know if you get to like see a YouTube a behind the scenes of your favorite artist and what they went through I mean it's very inspiring I think it's like very helpful to uh, help a person a young person navigate themselves through um, whatever path they're trying to get to Obviously, you write music as well. What's it like watching other people sing your songs? Is it is it great to see it happen, or do you sometimes want to get up there yourself? No, I enjoy watching other people. I feel like it's an extra element of what I do, and when it does happen, I feel very honored that someone's, you know, would deem it, um, you know, good enough to do. It's cool. And you are prolific in terms of the amount of music that you make. Where does that? Come from that drive? Do you think? Have you? Have you? Are you like that uh, in all aspects of your life? Are you an industrious person, or is it just I with mean, music? Uh, yeah, no. I mean, I think I am, I guess, but mostly in music. I feel like for songs, um, I feel that I am constantly inspired. But I also feel like I just I think that um, as a writer, I know how many songs don't make it out into the world. So you know, I, like I have um, mentors that have written. Um, some of the biggest songs you'll ever know, you know, and, and, and maybe they have like somewhere between 10 and 20 hits, if that, you know, in their life that everybody knows, but you can ask them how many songs they have that nobody's ever heard. And it's quite a lot. And, and when you think of that as like, as far as a success ratio, it's very interesting that, um, you know, you have to write a lot of songs in order for that to, in, you know, and I think I learned a while ago and, and it was something that set me free as a young artist that um, I stopped putting expectation on songs. I stopped thinking to myself, oh, you know, this is the one. This is the one. That's how, you know, um, because it just, it's, it's, first of all, it's disappointing and it's distracting you from doing more work. You know, when Lost on You uh, did so well, um, I was already maybe 40 to 50 songs away from that song. I didn't, I was, I, you know, I had no idea, you know, and, and a lot of people didn't have any idea. Like I've told many times I was dropped from my label, my major label at the time after I played them that song and a couple others that did quite well for me. And, you know, that's just, you know, one man's trash is another treasure. I say it all the time, and uh, but it's true. And it's just something that I feel like if there's one thing I could, you know, leave to pe- other artists, is that because I feel like it's really important for you to know that your life doesn't depend on one song.